there's a new pet, Chia Pet, the pottery that grows. Just soak the chia seeds, spread them on your Chia Pet, and keep him filled with water. In a few days, he sprouts his own beautiful green herbal coat, and soon you've got a lovely house plant. Everyone loves Chia Pet. They're fun to watch and easy to grow. So get one for yourself and one for that perfect gift. Chia Pet, the pottery that grows. The Chia Pet is available at Snyder, Red Owl, Snyder Brothers, and Walgreens. This week's hot deals at The Connection include a travel agency offering 15 to 25% off on selected cruises to the Caribbean, Trans Canal, and South Pacific. A caterer offers hors d'oeuvres for 25 people starting at just $130. Save on a one-carat diamond, regularly $5,500, now only $2,499, and save 70% on other jewelry. Buy a 52-inch hugger ceiling fan with five-light fixture, regularly $78, now just $49.99. Call 922-9000 for the details. It was a time when families pulled together and a time when a war was tearing them apart. It could cost him his life. One family, united in crisis and the spirit of the season. He'd be giving us a gift. Al Holbrook, Eva Marie Saint, and Family Ties' Courtney Cox in a Christmas classic. Merry Christmas, son. I'll be home for Christmas, Monday. I'm Tom Wright. Join me tonight for Vikings Extra. We'll have expanded coverage of the game, player guess and key plays. That's Vikings Extra tonight at 10 on News 11. We're from the Minneapolis Jewish Community Center Preschool. Good morning, Rolanda and Gil. Hi, Shelby. Welcome to PRISM, your community news magazine program with Rolanda Taylor and Joe Min Jones. Good morning, I'm Rolanda Taylor. And I'm Gil Amundsen, sitting in for Joe Manjaris. Well, Gil, today is the last day of Hanukkah, and at our house, we're getting ready for Christmas. Oh, we are too, Ro. In fact, I just read new stats showing that 8% of all men wait until December 24 to shop. I'm not going to be one of those. So that means you've got your shopping done already, right? No, no, no. It means I've got time to do Did it. Did you do your shopping? Okay. <laughs> Well, we're going to talk about tradition in our show today. More specifically, we'll look at traditional values we've grown up with and see how some of them impact our lives today. Singer Prudence Johnson grew up with values about peace and understanding between countries. Now she's preparing to go back to the Soviet Union, promoting peace with song. Today we'll also see how some kids are building values now that will prepare them to be internationalists later. They get a repertoire of learning to deal with the world and it's not only in problem solving and decision making but just the use of words and um, how to treat people. Now, Gil, I learned a lot about how to treat people at school too but most of the traditional values I have came from my parents. In Your Turn, the segment in which we go to the streets of the Twin Cities to find out what you think, we asked what traditional values you grew up with and would like to pass on. Here's what some of you had to say. I think one of the traditional values that I think is really appropriate, especially at Christmas, is the nuclear family with the mother, the father, and the children. I think that, unfortunately, it's something that's harder and harder to find. It's something I grew up with and uh, I still value very much, even though I'm 38 years old now. Family and love and just being together and being happy. I'd like to pass on the, uh, the values of morality, discipline, um, in the family, in school, and in the church. Sharing. I guess sharing your time, sharing your possessions, and uh, your feelings. Family was mentioned the most when we gave you a turn to tell us about traditional values. According to the Census Bureau, just within the last two years, the number of married couples with children has increased to almost 27% of all households nationwide. That's after a 15-year slump. But the largest group of households is still non-family, which are people who live alone or with those they're not related to. Within the last year, they make up 60% of the newest households. The number of people living alone is at a record high, nearly 22 million as of last March. Now, the U.S. leads other industrial nations in the number of single-parent families. Futurist Art Harkin says there are no counter trends in sight. The, the trends for single parent and single individual households are continuing to grow. 
And no one I know has a solution for the kids other than daycare or for those parents other than computer dating and counseling. I'm really serious. There, there, there are just very few ideas or what we call social inventions that are sitting around waiting to be pulled off the shelf and applied to those situations. Harkin says Canada is having some of the same problems. Here in Minneapolis, community centers play a big role in providing extended families for single parents. So do mentoring programs. Homework and Hoops is one of the many programs in the Twin Cities buddy system. We'll continue our series today on mentoring with this winning program that combines athletics and academics. We're going to take measurements at eight different locations of your body. In everything we Five do days a week, Warren Camp at, teaches physical education classes at Richfield High School in Richfield. What's your quiz most? Usually your quiz most questions are history. Over at St. Stephen's School in South Minneapolis, 11-year-old Thomas Byron John Brown, also known as Bo, is also learning some facts from his teacher. But once a week, Warren and Bo meet at a very special place for a very special reason. Warren is Bo's tutor, and on Thursdays, they play a little b-ball and hit the books. This unique program is called Homework and Hoops. We kind of hoped that it would go, that we'd even get kids to come. We were always hoping we'd have 20 girls, 20 boys, that we'd be able to run it on a week-to-week -week basis. That dream has come true. Forty kids are enrolled in the program, and they have a volunteer staff of 25. Warren says before Homework and Hoops, Bo didn't care very much for the program or school. I see him being more into what we're doing, much uh, happier, you know, he responds now, I think, better to, our, to what we're trying to, get to accomplish rather than sort of bucking the system. He's a fun guy and he teaches you how to play basketball and he teaches how to do your homework. In addition to helping kids like Bo turn around academically, Warren and other tutors are seen as members of an extended family. That's important because many of these kids come from single-parent families. Bo says he plans to stay in the program for a while, not just to polish his basketball skills, but to become a better student. Homework and Hoops is one of the many programs within the city's buddy system. If you want to find a buddy, call 340-7431. Or if you want to be a buddy, call 340-7621. Now, don't call now. Wait until tomorrow morning to call. The United Way offices that takes the calls open at 9 a.m. To find out how community centers are having an impact on families, we've invited Jean Greener. Jean is from Lori Nicola Bethlehem, where Homework and Hoops is located. And welcome, Jean. Thank you. Okay. Good to be here. Now, um, how are the community centers act like? How do they act like extended families? Well, I can speak for Lori Nicola Bethlehem Center. Uh, we see families who um, have a lot of problems, a lot of needs, trying to make it from one day to the next. And I think you were talking about traditional values. Traditional values come from traditional need, the need to be loved, to be accepted, to have someone encouraging you, to help you problem solve. And that's what we try to do at our center. The impact on families today is, is a strong one, is it? The, you mean the problems? The, in, the impact and, uh, that, uh, on the families yes. themselves. Oh, yes. I think we see many, many young people uh, parenting now in a rather adverse climate. Um, they are poor, uh, they don't have the resources that uh, they see all around them, and they want the best for their children, but they have trouble knowing how to, to get that, how to connect up with it. And education is, is a link that we feel is important to um, give as an option to the children. Well, we know a lot of the kids that are involved in this, these types of programs come from low-income families. Um, what do you think the situation, the future looks like? for them, um, considering the economic situation of the country. Will there be, need to be more programs like Homework and Hoops? Oh, I think, I think it's really important. Two things that Homework and Hoops does. One, it provides specific help with schoolwork. Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of us, thinking back on our school days, um, will forget how important that was. There were a lot of times when we needed that kind of help. But beyond that, our tutors, our mentors, provide a role model for the children, they build relationships, and you don't do that just overnight. Mm -hmm. I, 
I believe that you can't always schedule quality time with kids. You have to have a lot of quantity time, and along the way, the quality issues arise. Um, faith in yourself, belief in what you're doing, encouragement, um, those kinds of things happen a little bit along the way at Homework and Hoops and, and uh, help the children feel encouraged. And I think down the road, they'll be better students and better people for that. Do the kids come in on their own, or do you have to go out and get them? Well, both. Uh, you bounce a basketball, and it's not very hard to get a crowd of kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, most of the time they say, I don't have any homework, I'm doing all right in school, mm -hmm. but we work with parents and teachers and get it all together. Thank you, Jean Grinner. Hey, thanks, thanks for so being much. here. The Gannett Foundation is playing a part in preparing kids for the future. This past week, Gannett gave Ramsey Action Programs $127,000 for 20 new quality, affordable child care centers. The homes will serve up to 250 children from low to moderate income families. When PRISM returns, we'll tell you about a special program for women to help them find jobs that pay more money. Well, that sounds good, and we'll be right back. Koalas are coming to the Minnesota Zoo in spring 1989, but you can have yours for the holidays. For each donation of $25 or more, you will receive an adorable plush koala for yourself or to give as a gift. Koala sponsors also receive a certificate of adoption, koala fact sheet, and a special holiday gift card. Call the Minnesota Zoo Adopt Office for details at 431-9216. Sunday on NBC, can these guys make it as spies? In radical vertical impact simulation. Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> we need a plan. And Chevy Chase. We're Americans! Are down to their last hope. Mind if I play through? In a flame-throwing, camel-riding, hair-raising comedy. What's this? You don't want it! They've got one mission. Suck the paint off your house and give your family a permanent orange afro. To survive, Spies Like Us, Sunday on NBC. Hi, my name is Janan McCready Johnson. As president of the Board of Deafness Education and Advocacy Foundation, I would like to invite you to our resource center located downtown St. Paul. DEAF offers a variety of adaptive equipment and signaling devices for hearing impaired people. Also, we have the largest selection of books, novelties, and related equipment in the Midwest. The address is 419 North Robert Street, Suite 142, downtown St. Paul. The unemployment rate is down nationwide, in Minnesota too. Since last year in Minnesota, 61,000 new jobs were created, mainly in service and trade industries. Most of the jobs were developed in outstate communities rather than the metropolitan areas. Governor Perpich's idea at this point is, is to, we have to look at the city. Uh, what do we need to do? Uh, we have minorities, uh, minority uh, youth uh, is a problem for unemployment. We have uh, dropout problems, we have literacy problems, and those issues uh, have to be dealt with and they have to be dealt with now. Out of the 86,000 people unemployed in Minnesota in October, a disproportionate number of them were black, Hispanic, Indian, and teenagers. Head Start is one way the state is trying to offset the high unemployment rate in minority communities for the future. The educational program for preschoolers has proven to be very successful in having kids finish high school go on to college. Project Discover is another program the state is backing to train women for high paying jobs in non-traditional careers. The program includes career assessment and exploration and skill building in math and communications among other things. It's an eight-week course and provides the pre-training and guidance needed to pursue technical non-traditional jobs for women. Call 944-2222 during the week and ask for a project discover. There are spaces for only 30 applicants. Karen Nyman is one, of, one woman who successfully completed the Discover program. Now she's going to Hennepin Technical Institute. As Kate Maxwell Williams reports, Karen just finished her first week of training. You take these, Karen, and check those wires, or check that heater, as like we talked about this morning. Okay. So Working with machines is your, not what Karen pictured herself doing. She had a traditional idea of how her life would turn out. She expected to have kids, a husband, and a basic job like lots of women. She worked in a bank, but couldn't make enough money to support her family. That was not part of the dream. There's no money in banking at all. I, 
I ha I'm a single parent, so I have to make a living that my family can live comfortably on. At the bank, it was hard taking care of three children with her small paycheck. Her eyes get misty and her voice quivers when she talks about the last few years. Daycare was a big, a big issue for me where my whole paycheck was going for daycare and then there was no rent money and then of course if you have no rent, you have no food, no telephone and you end up going on, a I went on AFDC and um, you get stuck in a rut, you know, and then trying to go back to work, you know, thinking, oh, you know, nobody likes to be on AFDC, you know, nobody does, I mean, it's, you, you lose your self-esteem, your self-pride, you know, you, you lose a lot when you're on welfare, so. But Karen hasn't given up. She picked automated packaging to build a solid future for her family. When she successfully completes her two-year program, she plans to design machines and expects to make a starting salary from between eighteen to twenty-two thousand dollars a year. Each day after class, Karen picks up two of her three children in the daycare center down the hall. Do you have a good day today? Aaron. Come on, you gotta get your boots on yet. Remember your shoes stay here. Karen, Aaron, and Erica will return tomorrow. This little team is determined to win. For PRISM, I'm Kate Maxwell-Williams, News 11. Karen is one of several hundred women who've participated in the Dis Project Discover program. Thirty more will be chosen by January at Hennepin Technical Institute. Once they complete the eight-week uh, pre-training course, they will go on to train in non-traditional jobs for women just like Karen. And Gil, one other benefit uh, of Project Discover for Karen is Christmas looks a lot better this year. With her new career on her way, her future Christmases won't have to be so sparse. That's good news. Yeah. We do know, too, Rolanda, that Christmas is going to be a lot better this year for a lot of people. Our studio is quickly filling up with the toys for the Marine Corps Toys for Tots campaign. We like it when the studio is jam-packed with toys because that means more children will have a Merry Christmas. I want to thank all of you who've contributed so far. Ask others of you to please bring new unwrapped toys to the studio for needy children. There are other locations, too, including U.S. Swim and Fitness, Spur, and Conco Shoes. You have until December 18th to drop off your toys at those locations. We'll be back in just a moment. But not before we let you know about some important community events that are happening, are happening in our community. When your baby cries, remember, it's normal and even necessary. She's not trying to make you mad. Crying is her way of telling you what she needs. So the next time your baby cries, ask yourself, is she hungry, too hot or cold, bored, tired, or does she just need a little love from you? Helping your baby to stop crying won't spoil her. In fact, she'll realize the world is a loving, predictable place. I really don't know what to say. You're the first in this family to get into college. And we're so proud of you. I can't go, can I? Your mother and I have been over this a million times. Her work, my extra job. We just can't afford to send you. I didn't mean to let you down. I understand. Maybe next year. Maybe. We cannot continue to deny bright, hard-working students the opportunity of going to college simply because they lack the funds. Please, support the United Negro College Fund and help keep tuition costs down and the dream alive. Jimmy? Yeah? Will this help? The United Negro College Fund. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Lord Loon was born, not hatched, in the wilds of Minnesota. Raised on a healthy diet of laughter and fish, he grew to be eight feet tall. For a while there, he tried one career after another, until he finally found his niche in life, 
making people happy as the official Goodwill Ambassador of Gary Levin. So when you see Lord Loon out and about, step right up, say hello, and give him a great big hug. There's nothing that Lord Loon likes better than that. Expanding global awareness for the future is a top priority for the University of Minnesota. There are over 3,000 international students attending the U this year. They study and live in Minnesota with the help of the Office of International Education. The program is considered one of the top 10 international programs in the nation. The International School of Eden Prairie is one of the top of its kind, too, in the country. It's a school not only for children from other cultures, but also for kids who want to learn about other cultures. You might even call it a mini United Nations. Judy Nelson reports. Can you check that out? That six is smaller than 30 you know. These students are learning more than long division. They're also learning about people from other cultures. This is the International School of Minnesota, and six of the eight students in this class are from different countries. The more the students learn, the more curious they are when they see someone who's different. You want to meet the person, sort of, and get to know them. It makes me think about how their culture, how their life is, and how they act, how they learn. It's a wonderful way to get beyond prejudice, and it's a way of the future, according to this school. It's much easier when you're working with peers in the same class who come from different backgrounds, and you get to like them and know them as a people, to then look at some of the differences and celebrate them, instead of looking at them as differences and being afraid of them. This is a first grade Spanish class learning how to make piñatas. When they're three, students at the international school begin to study languages and cultures from teachers who are native speakers. Even though they may not get a chance to travel to every part of the world, these children will have a global perspective. And that's one of the goals of the international school. Singing songs in another language is one way younger children learn about customs in other cultures. Each drop of glue and each piece of paper that come together to make a piñata is different, just like each individual in the world. And these little ones are learning to celebrate the differences. For PRISM, I'm Judy Nelson, News 11. There are scholarships still available for kids interested in going to the international school. The school activity recruits kids from diverse backgrounds. Rolanda, one of the school teachers, brought these piñatas over to show us. These are the ones they were making in that Spanish class. Yeah, those are kind of neat. This like is a those. little bird, I think. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Oh, this is a plane. I have it backwards. <laughs> now it's a plane. What do you think's inside there? We don't know. Yeah, it'd be nice if it were money. It is Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to find out either. I don't. That's right. No, we can't break them. We have to return those. Oh, well, Gil, do you remember South Pacific? Some enchanted evening. No, no. <laughs> you got it down pat. Well, do you remember the song, You Have to Be Carefully Taught? A little bit. I'm not, I am not. I won't sing that. One. Okay. <laughs> but I do know that that movie had a lot of people in it from different cultures getting along. Well, we've got a bit of the song, You've Got to Be Carefully Taught, and we'll be right back. You've got to be taught to hate and fear. You've got to be taught from year to year. It's got to be drummed in your dear little ear. You've got to be carefully taught. News 11 at 6 is now closed caption, thanks in part to U.S. West. Think for a moment how it would feel to be seven years old, and your mom's inside somewhere, drinking, and you're scared she'll forget about you. She did forget, and that's real life. This child and lots of other hurting kids in our neighborhoods need places where they can start to feel safe again. Your gift to all our children will give them that in many ways through 14 different organizations that work for kids. It's a start. Ever thought about what it would be like if your wife brought home a new spouse? That's what your toddler feels like with the addition of a new brother or sister. Help your toddler get used to the idea. 
Let her get a diaper or give the baby a bottle. Get a sitter for the newborn so you can spend time alone with your toddler. And most of all, be patient. She's used to being an only child. Need more help? Call Minnesota Early Learning Design for information on parenting groups. In Europe and America, there's a growing feeling of hysteria. Conditioned to respond to all the threats in the rhetorical speeches of the Soviets. Mr. Cruz just said we will bury you. I don't subscribe to this point of view. It would be such an ignorant thing to do if the Russians love. That's a little sample of Prudence Johnson, and we'll share more of that with you later. You might recognize Prudence from the group Women Who Cook. Well, she hasn't left the group, but she has started up a new band called Rock House, and they're getting ready to go on the road in the Soviet Union. Mary Stuckey reports. practice session for Prudence Johnson and her group Rock House. They're getting ready for a trip to Russia next month, a trip they hope will be full of learning experiences. Have those experiences there and come back and relay the information to people here about what the Soviets really are like and, and, um, and what, what kind of people they are and what they really, how they feel about us. Um, I can't help but think that that will help make the world a more peaceful place. Prudence thinks that music is the easiest way to bridge cultural gaps. It didn't really matter so much that most of them couldn't understand what we were saying. It was, um, it's so easy to communicate through music. It's so easy to get emotions across. Prudence went to Russia last summer with the Women Who Cook tour. While she was there, she had a chance to do a song by Sting in Red Square. ignorant thing to do if the Russians love their children too. Now, Prudence says she's going back because she wants to learn more about the people. I thought the people there were really wonderful, and I, I feel that it's really important for us to, to build all the bridges we can in this day and age with especially people that are considered our enemies. Um, the people there really aren't at all. Prudence says she chooses music for the group that makes a statement about something she believes in. And she finds that her values are not that different from values of people she meets in Russia, especially when it comes to wanting peace. For Prism, Mary Stuckey, News 11. There will be a fundraiser for Prudence trip to the Soviet Union tomorrow night at the Dakota Bar and Grill in Bandana Square, Gil. She asked those who come to the show to bring letters and postcards that she can take with her to the Soviets. They love getting letters from Americans, especially the kids. Next week on PRISM, we'll devote the entire show to topics on religion. We'll take a look at how religion is impacting our lives today and what, why some people are doing to locally promote peace in internationally religious wars. Prudence Johnson takes her songs to the Soviet Union to promote peace. We've got tickets for you to her fundraising concert tomorrow night at Dakota Bar and Grill in Bandana Square, I right there. It. We've got <laughs> ten tickets here. Yeah. We'll close today's show with more of the song she sings by Sting. Russians love their children, too. See you next week, and the number to call for tickets is 546-7357. Bye-bye. Bye. Conditioned to respond to all the threats in the rhetorical speeches of the Soviets, Mr. Khrushchev said we will bury you. I don't subscribe to this point of view. Would be such an ignorant thing to do if the Russians love their children too. How can I save my little boy from Oppenheimer's deadly toy? There is no monopoly on common sense on either side of the political fence. We share the same biology, regardless of ideology. Believe me when I say to you, I hope the Russians love their children too. There is no historical precedent to put those words in the mouth of our president. 
There's no such thing as a winnable war. It's a lie we don't believe anymore. Mr. Reagan says we will protect you. I don't subscribe to this point of view. Believe me when I say to you, I hope the Russians love their children too. We share the same biology, regardless of ideology. But what might save us, me and you, is if the Russians love their children too. I know they do. It was a time when families pulled together, and a time when a war was tearing them apart. It could cost him his life. One family, united in crisis and the spirit of the season. He'd be giving us a gift. Al Holbrook, Eva Marie Saint, and Family Ties Courtney Cox in a Christmas classic. Merry Christmas, son. I'll be home for Christmas, Monday. Are your ears bored? Is your brain frosting over? Then get down to the Great American Music Company, your one-stop source for everyone on your gift list, including yourself. Get the new one from the Traveling Wilburys on Wilbury Records. Poisons open up and say ah on Capitol. And R.E.M.'s Green from Warner Brothers. Great American Music has over 100 hit titles on sale every day, plus a great selection of compact discs. So wrap it up at Great American Music. We've got everything you need to get through the holidays. At just 59 cents each, our original taco can satisfy the biggest appetite. Taco Bell has the road to make a ride for the boy. I'm Tom Wright. Join me tonight for Vikings Extra. We'll have expanded coverage of the game, player guess and key plays. That's Vikings Extra tonight at 10 on News 11. It is the downhiller's dance. A twist. A spin. A hop. A bounce. A skier's soft shoe performed in a hard boot. It is a dance against danger. Preparation for a symphony of speed.